Well, hello everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Morgan Malcolm and this is my channel, Love Where You Live. Today is exciting because we're going to be installing that Quick Connect or the Tongue and Groove wood floor. Um, if you missed my previous video on the removal of the carpet and the old wood floor, the Quick Connect that was already there, and then the prep work for today, I'm going to link the video up there so you can go ahead and watch that to make sure you're ready for today's installation part. So I'm gonna go through the whole thing of the install and the finishing of this, and it's a very long video, so I sped it up as, mo as much as possible so that it's not quite so long, but I'll slow it down at places where I need to talk about kind of what's going on and what we're doing in it. All right, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get started by using the flat edge of one of the boards, and you can see that one has the lip, and you wanna put it right up against the wall or the trim. I'm using these spacers to make sure it's evenly spaced from the wall. And those come in a pack, and I think I'll show them shortly. Yep, there they are. So it's 48 in a pack. We only needed one for our project, and we were able to make it work with just the one. It's only on the exterior, so it's not throughout the whole thing. And this is the underlayment. So that was from the previous video that I did, and you can go ahead and watch that if you hadn't seen it, but that shows us putting that down. So from there, all of the boards just click together and it's really simple. Um, there's not much to explain there. They just fit together with the tongue and groove. What we're doing though is as you go, you use this tool kit, which I will show later on, and you kind of just pound everything into place so that everything is nice and tight and fits together perfectly. Um, and then on the left side is where it's much easier because all the boards just fit up right against the wall. But once you get to the right side, you have to make cuts and um, make the boards fit perfectly into the space. So I'll show a couple of cuts in a bit. The two saws that we used were the table saw and a chop saw. So the chop saw was for any just straight cuts all the way through. The table saw was when we did anything a little bit trickier where you had to make um, more than just a straight th all the way through cut. So we're going to go through a lot more install here. Um, it basically, you just keep going throughout the whole floor. So one thing to keep in mind is traditional wood floors, the seams can't match. Um, every three boards is when the seams can come together. So a seam is where the board ends and the next one starts. And if you want it to look like the traditional wood floor, which I would recommend, it also helps with the stability of the floor, make sure you um, just vary where the boards are starting and stopping and make sure that every three rows is when it can start again. So in the packets of the boards that you get, you can see there's two different sizes. There's a long one, which I'm using here, and then there's a shorter one. Um, I think that's the shorter one right there. And it just comes with it. It helps you vary the lengths and it helps fit in different spaces. But the more of the long ones you can use, the easier it is because you have to do less install. So I recommend using as many of the long boards as possible. You can see here, I am actually sitting and not kneeling. My knees got so hurt by the end of this. So that was me marking for the next one. This is the um, chop saw. So where I marked, I'm just going to line up that saw and go all the way down. So how I marked that one is you flip the board over and you put it up against where you want the edge to be and then you mark the side that fits to the board next. So I'll show a couple more of those and explain a little bit more detailed on how we do that. Um, but this is just going to be much more install. We have a lot of floor to go. So here... We're just making sure all of them are lined up correctly and three rows before the next seam. So to explain those seams more, I'm going to show you right here. So I'm going to point to where the boards match up. So there's a seam right there and that's two boards, third board, it matches. You want to have one more in between that before the same seam lines come together. So that's what I mean by spacing those seams three boards out. And I think soon I'm gonna show some more cuts, but I'll let you watch for a bit and see just the install. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're gonna show you how to make those cuts. So the first way was the correct way for the board. I flipped it over and I'm giving myself a little space against the wall and I'm marking where that edge meets up with the next board. We're gonna do another one. So I pull it up a little way from that wall and then mark where I want that cut to be. And then we just go and do that one on the chop saw. This one over here, um, trim right there, is a little bit trickier. So you can see the um, board it's gonna match up with. You wanna line it up with where it's gonna be for that next board. And that's where you're gonna mark where this little um, cut needs to be made. So I'm gonna mark both sides. And there are ways to get it really accurate. I estimate how far in we need to go and then you can cut it a couple of times. Obviously you'd prefer to do it once. Um, we've done a couple of these already though, so I have a pretty good idea of where I want those cuts to be. Here's that chop saw, it just goes straight down. This thing is fun to do, it's actually really awesome. Just cuts right down and then those pieces fit right in. So this little one's a little harder. I'm gonna use a different tool to push that one in a little bit more. Um, so you can see I'm just gonna hit that with the mallet and this tool, they come in a kit and I'll show those in a bit. And then this is a pole bar, so it's metal and it's meant for going right up against that edge there. You can see it's thinner than the um, other mallet one was and you just bang that into place and it holds it all in nicely. So there were a couple options for getting for that pull bar. This is it by itself, where you just use that bar by itself and it's 12 or $13. And then they also had a kit, which I will show in a bit, which comes with that and the spacers and then that other, it's a hard plastic tool that I'm using on the rest of it. So you might as well get it in the kit, um, unless for some reason you have all those other pieces except for the pull bar. So now we're going to watch a bit more of the install and I will be back as soon as there's any more information you need. So just so you know, this project takes about three to five days. Um, the wood needs to acclimate for 72 hours, which is three days. So if you can get the uh, removal and the prep work done and then start acclimating the wood, um, you would have three days from there for the project. And I mean, all of the wood has different varying times. I still recommend even with these prefabricated woods or the laminate ones even to get the full acclimation time the reason you acclimate the wood is because of different temperatures and humidities or dry climates. So Colorado is very dry, but we go through periods where we have tons of snow and things like that where the humidity can increase drastically. And if you haven't acclimated your wood properly, it will either shrink after it's been installed or it will buckle and start to get the ridges and where it's like kind of little mountains and it will just be a waste of time for you and it's just so frustrating when that happens. So it's it's worth it to just wait the full amount of time. 
and properly let it acclimate. And because of that, it just makes this project take a little bit longer. Um, the install itself took us um, a full 24 hours-ish. Um, we did it in a day. And, I mean, you can obviously do it faster if you have more people working on it and things like that. I wanted to show that um, there's obviously just the two females, so it's myself and my mom doing this install. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to show... Even if you are, no matter what your gender, your age, anyone can do these things. This is a very easy project to do. It doesn't require a whole lot of expertise or anything like that. It's more just the patience and the time it takes to do it. It, you know, by the end of it, you can see I have um, knee pads on now because my knees were starting to get pretty bruised from kneeling for this whole install. So just having the proper, um, you know, equipment and tools uh, from the beginning is very helpful. And I would recommend definitely getting a higher grade um, knee pads. Don't get the cheap ones, get the nicer ones because those uh, work much better. And, you know, anyone can do these and it's, it's something I, I really am fond of having anyone try these projects um you know you can always have somebody come in if it becomes too much and have them install it so might as well give it a shot for yourself and then you know what what it takes to actually put in those floors Okay, so we're starting to get close to those appliances, and if you watch the install, you know that I stopped putting the underlayment down here, um, right where that fridge is, just because um, most of the time the appliances would already have been out before you get to this. But to move the fridge onto the underlayment would just rip it, so we are going to work up to that point for the wood and then pull the fridge onto the wood and then put the underlayment down underneath it. Um, that way we can just get it out without damaging the underlayment and that was the best way we could do it. If you have the option to remove all of the appliances, then obviously that would be the very easiest way to do this. Um, but sometimes that's just not an option or it's not the most practical. So this was the op option B of doing it with all of the appliances in and just moving it onto the wood as soon as the wood got close enough and that's what we did so I'll show that in a bit but I just wanted to mention that also in the bathroom we did pull the toilet and I show how to remove the toilet and reinstall it without using a wax ring so I'll put a little card up here so you can watch that if you need to do that it's a really great um, awesome new way to 
I don't think it's that new, but a new way to um, install a toilet without having to use the wax ring. Wax rings are just hard because it's pretty much a, much a one-shot kind of deal, and if you miss or you don't put it on correctly and you have to adjust the toilet, then that wax ring, the seal has been broken and it won't work correctly. So that's what um, I show that how to do that in a different video. All right. So here you can see that the fridge has been pulled out and it's now sitting on the wood and this is where that fridge goes. So we are putting the wood on it, the underlayment I had already put down. You just cut it to fit just like all the other places. And then the wood is exact same install. So nothing tricky there. It's just uh, figuring out how to get that fridge out without damaging the underlayment in the process. Here's how you finish it. So you can see that since the trim is already in, we're going to use quarter round and I use pre-painted because it's easier. You cut it to fit. So this is a bit tricky here. With the angles that we have in our trim, we have this extra little piece here. So instead of it being 45 degree angles like you would cut for most corners or in either the corners going in or the corners going out, they're both gonna be a 45 degree angle. These were 22 and a half degree angles. So you had to do two 22, 22 and a half degree angle cuts and that's what makes these match up perfectly. I am not gonna go through explaining all of this because it is just a mess for me to try to do and I did try it and it, it's just not good. I did find a video on someone who does a wonderful job explaining this, so look in the description box below if you need more help on cutting these quarter rounds um, to get those to fit perfectly. And all we're going to do from there is just use a nail gun to install it. But here's some of those cuts. I'll show you how those look on a, it's just gonna be the chop saw on that as well. And you can see the red part is where um, the blade's gonna be. So we adjust that to 22 and a half. And then you just make that cut right there. It's pretty simple, but um, when you start to do it, it feels a lot more complicated. So again, 22 and a half, just making that cut on the quarter round. And then once we get those cut, all you do is use the nail gun and you nail them into place. And then from there, you're just going to use caulking to make all those seams go away. So you caulk it and you can paint it again if you need to, if it doesn't match up. So our color is a tiny bit off. Eventually I will go through and paint it, but we needed to move in. So this project, I ended it here. Um, so this is that 45 degree angle. It's an inseam angle. So those cuts were 45 degrees and they match up perfectly. And that's how you finish the trim if you're not going to remove the trim when you're installing the wood floor. So you do want it to have that space. You just add a quarter round to it and then um, everything looks perfect when you're all done. Caulking it makes it all look like one solid piece. And it's a very simple process. I will do a whole video on how to caulk things correctly and tips and tricks for that. But again, this video is getting pretty long, so I will just make another video using that. Um, if you don't know how to use a nail gun or you don't have one, ask some instructions first. You do have to have it pushed all the way in for it to fire at all. So there's that, um, the, the nozzle piece has to be pushed in far enough for it to actually shoot any nails in. And it's pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's pretty similar to any other, like if you use a staple gun or things like that for any projects. But if you haven't used one before, it can be a bit intimidating. Um, plus it has a compressor that can get really loud. So my son did not enjoy the compressor sounds, but, um, this was a very quick part of the project. So really not bad. So I'll let you watch this and then we'll do some before and after pictures. All right, so this was the main living area before in the dining room. You can see the carpet. And here is what it looks like after with the new wood in. And again, that di dining room and living room with the carpet. And now with the wood. So we picked a wood that has quite a bit of variation in the colors and the planks itself. Here's that bathroom before. So this is the old wood that was in it, pretty traditional color-wise. We went a little bit lighter and a lot more variants and it has a gray undertone to it. 
And here is the kitchen. Now make sure that you click subscribe and that notification bell if you have not yet. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. All right, bye.